Good evening, St. Peter's. Welcome to today's evening prayer. I do hope you're having a good week. Why don't we begin our time together as we normally do by uh, lighting our candles. And as we do so, we remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, that Jesus is the light and the hope that shines out into the darkness and we remember once again today the truth and the hope that we find in Jesus. I want us to um, take a moment now of a confession to come before the Lord in repentance and so why don't we uh, just take a moment to uh, perhaps call to mind as we pray uh, those things we've said or done that we know have uh, damaged ourselves and our relationships with perhaps our friends and our families or people we know. And we know, don't we, that these things have perhaps um, created a barrier in our own relationship with the Lord this week. So let's take a moment to confess our sins. And I'm going to lead us in this confession, this prayer. And if you would like to join in, you're very welcome to. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. And as we uh, pray and we confess our sins before the Lord, we know that God in his grace is only too quick to pour out his forgiveness into our lives. So mighty God, our heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well we're going to uh, worship the Lord now and then we are going to hear the next reflection on the Psalms. So let's worship Jesus together.
Today we're looking at Psalm 5. And I'd like to read you the whole psalm. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry, my King and my God, for I will never pray to anyone but you. Listen to my voice in the morning. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. O oh God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the slightest sin. Therefore, the proud will not be allowed to stand in your presence, for you hate all who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house with deepest awe and worship you at your temple. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Tell me clearly what to do and show me which way to turn. My enemies cannot speak one truthful word. Their deepest desires, desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul, like stench from an open grave, and their speech is filled with flattery. O oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own trap. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they rebel against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Protect them, so all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord, surrounding them with your shield of love. As we all know, <clears throat> we can read a, ma a passage many times, and sometimes the words are just there on the page and nothing happens. And then one day those words leap off the page and speak in, to us in a, in a different way making it perhaps more personal, more challenging, more encouraging. And so it is with this psalm. And there are three sections which seem to make the most impact on me, and I'd like to share them with you. Verse three, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. <clears throat> I love that idea that we can cry out to our loving God every day and be expectant of his response. It may be that we have to be patient, but he will answer in a way which perhaps will surprise and sometimes delight us. Praying is an integral part of our faith because we know that our God longs for us to speak to him. Verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice, let them sing joyful praises forever, protect them so that all who love your name may be filled with joy. We can always have our loving God as our refuge. <coughs> Excuse me. But for me, the crucial verse is verse seven. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house. Everything else in the psalm, for me at least, hangs on this verse. Because elsewhere in the Old Testament, time and again, we're reminded that only a chosen few were permitted to go into the Holy of Holies. But here is King David, confident that he can walk right in. It reminded me of the verses in Matthew, which describe when Jesus uh, Gave up, go, gave up the ghost, and the curtain at the temple was torn top to bottom. I love the verses in Hebrews 10, which refer to this, and I'd like to read them to you. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. This is the life-giving way that Christ has opened up for us through the sacred curtain by means of his death. For since we have a high priest who rules over God's people, let us go right into God's presence with two hearts, fully trusting in him. Jesus' sacrifice is, was and continues to be sufficient, enabling us, because of his love, to walk right in. No longer 
Is there anything to prevent us coming into his presence to worship and adore? No longer are there any demands before entering, only our submission to our God and our desire to be with Jesus. In his presence, we know that his guidance for our lives will be there. His leading will show us the way. At this particular time, when all that is happening around us is enough to, as it were, drive us potty, what with the lockdown and the virus and restrictions and so on, it can uh, get us to lose our focus a bit. So it seems to me that even more, we like David should walk right into his presence, the presence of our almighty God. And as we rest in him and upon him, all that stuff which winds us up and drives us potty can be put in perspective. Because when Jesus knocks on our door and we invite him in, all that other stuff can be put out the door, no problem. The final verses sing out confirmation of how our great and glorious God is our refuge. As the prayer says, a very help in times of trouble. And these verses underpin the promise which is open to all of us, that we can rest in the everlasting arms of the Lord Jesus, that we can be joyful and sing his praises, that we'll always have his grace, his mercy and protection. Perhaps I can leave you with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercies which are new every morning. Help us to be regular and faithful in our prayer life. May we come into your presence with joyful expectation, knowing that you are a God who hears our prayers and answer in your own way and in your own time. And all this we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.
As we draw our prayers together, in a moment we'll pray the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I do hope this evening has been a blessing to you and that we've been able to uh, pray and worship together. Why don't I bring our time to a close now with a prayer of blessing. So Father God, thank you for your love for us, Lord. Uh, thank you for um, the Psalms, Lord. Thank you for all that we learn about you and all we can learn about how to relate to you and speak to you. And Lord, I pray your blessing on each one of us and our families at this time. Pray that you would fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, that you would set our hearts on fire with love for you, that you would empower us to do all that you've called us to do for the rest of this week. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of the week and hopefully see you on Sunday. silent anymore You have told me who I am I won't feed doubts anymore You have shown me who I am meant to be yeah. I won't falter when you're walking with me, I would stay. I won't stay silent anymore.